for a while now I've been experiencing the problem that by directly connecting an inverter or boost converter to my solar off-grid system, which I showed you how to build in a previous video, the complete electronic load gets turned off. After removing the culprit component however, the system restarts without a problem. The reason for this behavior is apparently the MPPT charge controller, which features a protected load output that can deliver a maximum of 15 amps. But by measuring the current flow of my unloaded inverter, it seems like it is only drawing a minor fraction of that maximum current. So why are the protection features kicking in? Well, we are about to find out in this video. And while we're at it, I will also show you what other appliances come with a similar problem. And how we can create a simple circuit that can fix this big inrush current dilemma. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can upload one Gerber file to not only order your PCBs easily, but also the fitting stencil for SMD soldering. So feel free to try out their service and experience their fast production and delivery time today. Like already stated during normal operation, the inverter does not cause any problems because the input current stays underneath the 15 amp limit with an appropriate load. But we can kind of guess that the startup is the problem, since connecting the battery to the inverter creates sparks at its terminal. So to properly measure the current flow, I connected 5 1 ohm resistors in parallel to create a 0.2 ohm current shunt. This shunt will be placed in series to the inverter and both sides of it will be connected to an oscilloscope in order to measure the voltage drop across it. With the known voltage drop and the resistance, we can then easily calculate the current. So after building up this test setup, it was time to connect the inverter and measure the current flow on the oscilloscope. As you can see, we got a huge spike at the beginning, with a maximum of around 6.1 volts which converted to current equals around 30.5 amps. No wonder that the solar charger load protection got activated. After this current pulse, the value settles down quickly to the normal operation current values. And by replacing the inverter with the boost converter I had the same problems with, we can see that it features pretty much the same current pulse problem with peaks of up to 28 amps. To find the culprit for this behavior, I opened up not only the boost converter, but also the inverter, and immediately found the guilty components, the big capacitors on the input side. As you might know, a real capacitor consists of a small ESR, the actual capacitance in parallel to the insulation resistance, and the ESL, which is so small that we can ignore it for now. Now the insulation resistance discharges the capacitor slowly, which means it is not really relevant for the charge up. During the charge up however, the current is only limited by the ESR value, which according to the datasheet of a random generic capacitor is pretty small. That means a huge current flow occurs until the capacitor is charged up. So to decrease this current value, we could simply add a resistor in series to the capacitor. For that, I tried this 3.3 ohm resistor, which I hooked up in series to the inverter. And as you can see, after powering it up, the current spike only reached a value of 610 millivolts, which equals around 3.05 amps of current. Perfect! Now of course, the charge up of the capacitor does take longer with the lowered current peak. But then again, this way we would not trigger the solar charger controller protection features. But by testing the inverter with the attached resistor, I noticed that the mains voltage output was not stable. Which was actually not a surprise because with a load of 8.5 watts, we would need a minimum current of 700 milliamps on the inputs 
which would create a voltage drop of 2.31 volts across the input resistor and thus create an undervoltage for the inverter. And even if there wouldn't be an undervoltage problem, we would still waste quite a bit of power through the input resistor, which is also not desirable. So to find a solution to those problems, I opened up a power supply, which features a big input capacitor as well, and thus would require inrush current limiting components. Right? Well, I did not find any resistors in series to the input voltage. But instead I found this green flat disk in series, which after removing it and googling its label, turned out to be a 10 ohm NTC thermistor. That means in its normal unpowered state, it comes with a resistance of 10 ohms, perfect for inrush current limiting. But as soon as the operation current passes through it, the NTC becomes harder and thus drops in resistance which equals a lower voltage drop and thus less power losses. Now even though this method is a pretty big standard for power supplies, there was one problem that bothered me. If I cut the power, the thermistor takes a bit of time to cool down, which means another power up shortly after the turn off can lead to another big inrush current. So for my final solution, I wanted to stick with the resistor to which I wanted to add a small circuit, which bypasses it one second after the power up to minimize the voltage drop. And after tinkering a bit with a couple of components, I came up with this schematic, which only requires a relay, two resistors, one capacitor, one diode and one MOSFET. Now as soon as power is applied, the current for the inverter flows through the resistor because the relay is not activated since the gate capacitor of the MOSFET was discharged through the 100 kilo ohm resistor. But while the inrush current is already decreasing, the 10 microfarad capacitor gets charged up to 6 volts through a pull up resistor, which basically builds up a voltage divider with the discharge resistor. The 6 volts at the gate are enough to drive the MOSFET in its ohmic region with a relay coil current of merely 36 milliamps, which means almost no power losses through the MOSFETs. Now the time constant of the RC network is around 1 second, which means it takes around 1 second to reach 63.2% of the 6 volts max value, which should be the time the MOSFET starts conducting and thus turns on the relay coil, which then closes the relay contacts and thus bypasses the resistor. Of course, we do have a constant power loss of around half a watt due to the relay, but that is honestly nothing compared to the battery capacity or the previous power losses through the resistor. And as soon as power is disconnected, the energy of the magnetic field of the relay discharges through the diode and the capacitor discharges through the resistor. Now of course, I tested the circuit meticulously and as you can see, the relay activates with a long enough delay, we got our lovely capacitor charge slash discharge curves and the MOSFET wastes pretty much no power. And after testing this circuit with the inverter and coming to the conclusion that everything works as expected, I started soldering all the components onto a piece of perfboard and to one another according to the previously shown schematic. And if you're interested in creating a similar circuit, then you can not only find more information about it in the video description, but you should also alter the power resistor value according to the current draw of your appliance. For example, my inverter needs 3.3 ohm, while my boost converter would not trigger the charge controller even with a small 1 ohm resistor. It is important to use the smallest value possible, because if your relay circuit fails, you would waste the smallest amount of power. But anyway, as soon as my circuit was complete, I directly soldered it to the inverter's insides. And after closing everything up and bringing the components back to my garage, it seems like everything works fine. Awesome! Power supplies though are not the only victim of big inrush currents. 
all kinds of motors come with a similar problem. That is why the name soft starter is usually associated with them. But that is a subject for another video. I hope you enjoyed this small project and learned a bit about soft starters and the inrush current problematic. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!